Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to my Microsoft Entre Admin uh, deep dive series. Um, so we are we are well in, you know well cracking on with the series now. About this is gonna be the third, I want to say third or fourth episode. Um, and I, I, we've look, been looking basically going through the Microsoft Entre Admin Center uh, and looking at sort of that left hand side panel um at the at the services and features uh previous episodes if we've covered users and groups i'll put the link um to those episodes in the description um and we've also been looking um you know oh, best practices some you know be talking about some real real reuse use cases that i've done in the past um as well as spent a lot of time in, in the portal actually configuring um con configuring uh settings and configuring users and groups and, and talking about how to do dynamic groups so let, let's get into the the um de demonstration let's get into the presentation uh, and get this started so uh, as i mentioned this is the microsoft Entre deep dive series um and let's just recap what i spoke about in the last episode so um it was about azure Active directory groups specifically Went through management tasks, so how to manage the groups and how to, um, you know, what, what what properties we can change and you know where we can assign members and owners, etc. Um, and then we looked at the group settings. So again, that was, um, you know, do, do we do we allow owners to be able to um, uh, approve group membership and letting users create groups and stuff like that? And also group types. So there were three group types, if you remember. There were security groups, Microsoft 365 groups, and dynamic groups. So we talk about the differences between those. And we finished off with actually um, configuring a dynamic group. And again, in the management tasks uh, section, I did create you know a security group and I showed how to go through that process. Um, and then again, throughout that sort of episode, I spoke about best practices and you know in sort of the, the sort of real world, how have I done it in the past? Um, so let's start. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to move on to talking about uh, uh, devices within Azure Active Directory. So again, as I'll show in the portal shortly, just going down that left-hand pane, looking at the different options. Um, so here we have, uh, we're going to talk about management tasks again, how to manage devices. We'll look at device settings. We're going to talk about enterprise roaming. And then we'll look at, again, throughout this episode, we'll look at best practices. Uh, so let's go jump straight into the portal and start looking at some of those management tasks. Welcome back. So here we are in the Microsoft Entre Admin Center again. As I mentioned, we're going down this left-hand side. I already mentioned we looked at users and groups. We're now on devices. So here we are in the overview. Um, and if we look, um, we've got, uh, obviously, it's similar to how we had with users and groups. There's a similar sort of feel to it. So we've got an overview, which gives us some, some information on the dashboards. Um, but then if we go to all devices, this is where we can start actually doing some management tasks. Um, so I've got um, a few, I've not got many of these, are previous sort of devices that I've done during my sort of demos and sort of having to play. But we can, uh, here we, we can actually select uh, a device for example, and we can either disable it, delete it, uh, or we can download a list of devices, refresh it, um, or we look at some preview features here. But we actually need to go into the device to actually do the, the proper management task. So again, um, most of the options are grayed out so the, the name you can't change when it you can only change the name from the actual device so this takes the device name from actually the operating system uh, you've got a device id object id uh, you know is it, is it enabled yes the operating systems so you get a lot of useful information here so you can't really do much as far as changes go but again it tells you what join type is so this is a zero ad join so if it was maybe um a hybrid it would tell you if it was hybrid joined or not who the owner is you know upn again these are all feature things that you set um, you can't set from here. All you can do from here is either disable or delete it. Those administrators here, we can see again what role is assigned to this device. Again, because you can assign devices to, to roles to devices. We can see here the the Azure AD role, Cloud Device Administrator, is set to this um, set to this device. Again, you can set administrative units as well. So again, we, we will look through this when we get to that. We get the role administrators. Uh, yeah, admin unit. So we'll get to this. We'll try and assign a device uh, to a, a, a assign an administrative unit to a device. Uh, and this is a bit locker. So again, if you've got a bit locker key, um, this is where you will see that bit locker key kind of information here. Um, but again, not much we can actually do from from Azure AD. Um, 
for, for those that are more familiar with Intune, that's where you can actually do a lot more device management. Um, and that is normally, you know, it used to be called, it used to be called Intune, then it used to be called uh, Endpoint Manager, and now it's Intune again. Um, but again, um, you can you can do more management stuff from through Intune. So very limited to what we can do from a management perspective here. Uh, we can pretty much disable or delete. Um, and say we can click on a different one, uh, depending on um, if it's what type of device it is, I suppose. Um, here again, that's changed. So if we click on Manage here, this allows us to to um, manage it. But again, we've, it's not cause these devices are old, I suppose. Let me try and find a device that I can uh, potentially manage. Nope. 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 So look at that. Yeah, all these devices are old, unfortunately. So there's no. I've actually got no live devices in this tenant, unfortunately, because I'm not. I'm not. Um, I've not as you already joined any. But this is where you, you click on manage and you could manage the device. Then, um, so again, we're, we're, I'm unfortunately limited to what I can do, but you can, like I said, go into a device, uh, get settings, disable it, delete it, um, and then actually, if if the device is is live. Um, which mine's not, I think the last year, so if you see here, it's not compliant either, and it was registered back in 2020, so I've not got any devices. Uh, its last activity was, no, oh, that's the first of the third, so it has actually been, um, it has actually been uh, active. Uh, so I should be able to manage it. Uh, but no, there's, there's no record showing here. Um, so there should be like a record here, and we should be able to manage that. Um, but that's not letting us. So um, again, limited to what we can do. Um, but let's uh, let, let's jump back into the presentation. See what the next topic is around devices. Welcome back. So let's have a look at what we're going to talk about next around devices. So we'll look at device settings now. So again, very similar to you know the the, the format we do users and groups. Um, let's jump back into the portal and have a look at what we can do with device settings. So we are back in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. Um, we're going to click on device settings here. Um, and here, again, similar, you'll notice a pattern. It's obviously very similar to how we had the users and group settings as well. Um, so here at the top, um, users may join devices to Azure AD. Um, so here we can either allow all users to, to join devices, select um, a group if you want. I'm going to just click on now. Again, when we're talking about enrolling devices and, and, and automation from, from a device perspective, user device perspective anyway, you know, we talk about auto-enrollment uh, with, with uh, autopilot and Intune. It's probably best to leave this as either all users or select a group which has all users in it. Because if, if we select this to none, then that that whole automation but autopilot phase will just will just stop because they won't be able to join the devices. If we're gonna try and automate that device provisioning process with Intune and Autopilot, this needs to be selected as and left as all, or, or at least a group that has everyone in it. Probably best to leave it at all. Because again, this is gonna allow users just to, to in that because you're automating as you're in, in autopilot for those that know it, it go it automates that join process. Um, so users need to needs to be able to the user account needs to be able to do because they're logging with their user account when they do that autopilot process. Um, so I would recommend as a best practice leaving this as yes uh, or as all at least. Um, so again, when we go down here, users may register their devices with Azure AD. So again, a join and register are very very different. Um, so we need to be need to be careful. You can distinguish between the both of them there, here. So. I think this is set to no because we've set a user setting. Um, so this is grayed out, sorry, because there's probably a user setting that we've set somewhere uh, on, on the user settings, but this is, this is selected to all um, so users can register their devices as well. Uh, so this is another one around requiring multi-factor multi authentication to register or join devices. I, I would recommend um, having this set to yes um, because again, it's important that the user not just has to authenticate but has to go through MFA as well because it's just another layer of security. Um, but make sure when you are, you know, it's got a little little warning. You recommend that you require MFA to register or join devices with Azure AD using conditional access. So you must have a conditional access policy to do that. 
so make sure you've got that created as well so again they recommend it's a Microsoft recommendation as well as me recommending it so it's the best practice to have that selected as yes uh, I'm not going to just just it's a demo tenant so I don't want to unmistakably lock myself out you know we've all done that before um moving on so the maximum number of devices per user so you could select again depending on what your company policy is to have five ten it says there 20 is actually recommended so there's a best practice for you having you know no more than 20 um devices per user and finally at the bottom and again it says you can manage additional local admins um so if i just click on that we can actually um Texas Device Administrators, we can actually assign a device admin. So this user will be classed as a local admin to uh, the device when it's joined. Um, so there's a, there's a setting you can set there as well. Um, and then here we can restrict non-admin users from recovering the BitLocker keys for their own devices. I, I, I would, this is in preview, but I would recommend restricting it if I'm honest. Um, because again, I think that should be an administrative task to do. Because you, you need to know if... Why are users having to recover their BitLocker keys? I think there needs to be a bit more investigation around that. So I would recommend that being a sort of, you know, they have to log a ticket and get that process done. So I, I would leave that as, as um, I would leave that as yes. Uh, I'm not going to set that. Um, but let's just discard those changes. So th these are the device settings I wanted to go through. Let's jump back into the, the um, uh, presentation because I want to talk about enterprise roaming before, for a state room before we come back in and configure it. Welcome back. So we've just looked at device settings and I wanted to start talking about, do a bit of bit of theory around enterprise roaming before we move on to try to configure it. Um, so this is, um, enterprise roaming allows you to have like a unified experience for your users across all their Windows devices. So not just the, the settings, but also like um, data as well, your files, your settings, apps, stuff like that. It allows you to, to have the, the same experience across your multiple, say if you have, you know, said so we saw the recommended um, amount of devices for per user was 20. So if you have multiple devices, which most users do, they have a phone, maybe a tablet, you know, a laptop, um, then you can have that same experience across all your Windows devices. So they all have to be Windows devices, first of all. Uh, and it, uh, what that allows you to do then is minimize that deployment time. So again, it's automating a process which, which cre creates less, less pressure on your admin team, your IT team. You do need to have an Azure AD premium license, talking P1, P2, or uh, enterprise mobility and security license uh, to have this feature. So just be wary of that. You can't just have it without a license. You need to have Azure AD P1 or P2 or EMS license. Um, and again, w when it comes to data storage, this is stored according to that the value that's set uh, as your country in your account. So again, if you've got the, the UK um, country set, value set in your, in your user account, then that's actually where the data will be stored. If it's, um, you know, France, then it'll be in Europe and so on. So make sure that that country value is set when you use Enterprise Roaming because that 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 is, uh, especially with data sovereignty, GDPR, especially in the UK being so prominent, it's very important to, to make sure your data has been stored um, according to where your security policy allows it to be secured, to stored. So again, especially for a lot of, again, we're talking about use cases here, I do a lot of work for, for central government within my job. Um, and data sovereignty is massive that you, know, you can't have data outside the UK. So use enterprise state roaming, make sure you set that value to the UK and then the data will be stored in the UK as well. Um, and the data is actually retained until it's it's deleted or, or deemed stale. Again, we'll look at the settings to, to, to kind of um, allow you to set that sort of stale record um, time limit. So uh, yeah, let's jump back into the portal and do a quick little uh, a quick look at enterprise um, state roaming before we finish this episode. Welcome back. So we've also started, we've obviously been talking about device settings um, before. Now when we want to sort of enterprise state roaming, and we just we just did a bit of theory on enterprise state roaming. Now what what you do in in Azure AD for this is you can actually all you do is enable it. Um, so at the moment, mine's set to none. So you can either select a group you want to do it to or all users um, and then save that. One thing to note is, I know I mentioned that you need Azure AD, Azure AD Premium or EMS, but here it does actually say that um, you can actually ha still use this feature, but only for, if you don't have those licenses, but, but it has to be for all users. So if you want to pick and choose your users, like a group, for example, you do need a premium license for those people. Now, what this will do is automatically have your um, all your users uh, give that them that experience. Now, if you want to be more specific with the settings, you need to either set an Intune policy or a group policy as well. If you've got hybrid devices, so or GPO, for example, 
So just know all you can do in Azure AD is enable that feature to have more customized settings. You have to have an Intune policy or group policy, GPO. Uh, okay, so that's all we can actually do within the Azure AD admin, or Microsoft Entra admin center for this. Um, so that is the end of this episode. So again, a bit of a shorter episode, but there wasn't as much to do on devices within Azure AD and Microsoft Entra. It's mainly an Intune, you do most of the administrative work. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to, to like, comment, and obviously subscribe. Don't forget about my, um, the, again, I did doing a giveaway for that. I will announce the uh, the winner soon. Just waiting for again because this this episode's come out a couple of days after each other. Just got to give a couple more days and I'll announce the winner. Uh, I will be giving a book another book away in either the next episode or the episode after that. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, and until next time, goodbye.